Welcome to My Stone Castle. Today we are learning the basics for all kinds of cooking, and that is how to make sauce. So in classic French cooking, there are what is referred to as the mother sauces, and they are, there's five of them, and three of them are basically duplications of each other with some variations on the theme. One is a hollandaise, we're gonna reserve that for another time. One is a tomato sauce, reserve that for another time. And the three that we're gonna be focusing on is one is a bechamel, one is called a velouté, and the third one is called an espagnole. Now a bechamel, a velouté, and an espagnole sauce are made with the foundations of a roux, and they are basically, one has milk, one has chicken broth, and the other one has a beef broth. So they're this foundational ingredient called a roux, which we're gonna learn how to make today, which is nothing more than a combination of fat, 99% of the time that's butter, and flour, or a starch. So make, making a roux is so simple, and it, as I was saying, it's so foundational. Simply, we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna, first of all, assume that we're gonna be thickening about four, quarts, uh, four cups of liquid, so that's a quart. This is a quart, this is a quart, this is a quart. So, you know, the grocery store helps you out in a lot of ways on that. And it takes uh, a certain amount of fat and flour to thicken these liquids based on what you're making. So if you want a very thick sauce for, let's say, not super thick, but for chicken, that's gonna be one amount of liquid. If you want a less thick sauce, you're gonna use more liquid or less fat and butter, depending on, on which approach you wanna take. But let's keep it simple. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna measure out, to, me to thicken four cups of liquid, I'm gonna measure out two ounces of butter. Put that in my pan. And then I'm gonna measure two ounces of flour. So I put the bowl on the measure, I hit the T button, which st stands for tear and that zeroes out the weight of the bowl. And then I just put in two ounces of flour. Couldn't be easier. Perfect. Now I'm gonna, before I add the flour here, I'm gonna take this big pot, put it on the stove, and let that butter melt a little bit. And then I'm going to add the butter. Uh, excuse me, add the flour. And then we're gonna mix it and let the butter and the flour cook together. And what we're trying to do is get the starchy flavor out of the flour. There are three different colors or four different colors of roux, depending on how long you let that flour cook. In the beginning, it starts off white and it progresses then to a blonde color. Then it turns to a color that looks a little bit like peanut butter. And then it turns really dark. And that's when you would use the beef stock. So the darker the, the roux when it cooks is corresponds with the, with the darkness of the liquid and the origin of the liquid. So this is the beef stock. So you can use that dark roux with, you know, with, a, with, with any kind of beef stew or any kind of uh, beef or, or meat dish that you're serving that needs a nice dark sauce. Conversely, the blonder roux corresponds with chicken, or if we're doing what we refer to as the bechamel sauce, that's a blonde roux that we use with milk. And that is the basis for macaroni and cheese, all kinds of pasta dishes. You know, if you can nail this roux with the liquid, you can make a thousand things. And in fact, on our website, we're gonna post the mother sauce chart so you can figure out how to take these basics and make probably a hundred dishes. Couldn't be easier. One of the best tricks about making a roux or a sauce with no lumps is to heat up the stock before you mix it into the roux. So I always take a little saucepan, sometimes I do it in the microwave, and I put a little flame underneath it just so that when I incorporate it, it's, it dissolves the butter sugar, uh, butter flour combination really easily. So I keep stirring my roux as the uh, 
flour continues to cook down. And this is what we would call a white roux or a blonde roux. And as, if I were to leave this on the stove, it would continue to caramelize and get darker. And that would be appropriate for the beef stock. So as you can see, this roux is starting to get a little bit brown on the bottom, but I wanna keep this a blonde roux because I have chicken stock here and I'm going to be using this on some roasted chicken tonight. So I am going to turn this off and wait for my stock to get a little bit warmer so that I don't get any lumps. So my, my, um, my stock is a little bit warm and my roux is ready. If I left it on the stove, it would keep darkening and I didn't want that. So I'm going to take my wire whisk in this case and just start to send the hot liquid in. And as you can see, not a lump in sight and it's thickening as I'm incorporating the liquid. It's, it's just right, I'm gonna stop there and let it cook a minute and it will continue to thicken. And then based on the thickness that I'm going for, I'll keep adding the liquid or I may, may feel like I've ha I have enough. But as this gets uh, higher in temperature, it will continue to thicken. And sometimes I've over, um, I've over diluted it and sometimes I don't have enough hot liquid ready to go. So it's a little bit of hit or miss but you don't need a recipe to figure that out. Just add water if in, if in fact it gets too thick with a little extra salt. So here it's starting to bubble a little. And look at that, not a lump in sight. And I tell you, if you add cold liquid, you'll have lumpy, lumpy sauce. So the other thing that's really good to learn is when you're roasting a turkey, let's say, you wanna make turkey gravy, instead of having to put butter, all you do is you sprinkle the flour into the turkey fat that's rendered from the roasting of the turkey and then and then incorporate that and cook that roux and then just simply add your turkey stock or chicken stock, whatever you happen to have on hand. Now you can see this is starting to boil and I'm going to add a little more stock. And that is perfect. I have a little bit left over, and as it continues to cook, I'll make a decision about whether I wanna add it. This is exactly what would, it, it would look like if you were incorporating milk and making the basis for macaroni and cheese or all kinds of dishes. Um, you can add you know, cheddar cheese to the sauce, you can add whatever you want, and it just is a fantastic way to just be able to own your kitchen. One thing I want to make uh, a point about is that the cookware that you use to make a roux or a sauce, this is my favorite. It's a La Crusette. It weighs a million pounds. My mom, who's 90, has a really hard time getting it from the stove to the sink. But I highly recommend you use something with a, with a nice thick bottom because it, it evenly distributes the heat so when the roux is cooking, you don't get hot spots. Get rid of the lousy, cheap stainless steel pots and pans. Get them out. And you know, even a, even an all clad pot, you know how much I love those. These are nice and, and, and sturdy on the bottom. Highly recommend that. So this is chicken gravy or the basis of a soup. You could, you could continue to add stock and have a nice, um, you know, nice thickened chicken soup. And the other thing I wanna just say at the end, you're done. A little salt and pepper, chicken will come out of the oven and you've got a perfect meal.